Whoa. What's up, everybody? How are you? My name is Ryan Cook, and this is Tool Talk. Tuesday probably comes out Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. Who knows? Um, I just do the best I can for this YouTube page because we got a lot going on. It's summertime. Right now, I'm pumping stuff out. Uncle Kevin's about to arrive, and I want to talk about templates. So template, that was maybe my thumbnail there. That's why I held the position. So thumbnails are tem <laughs> te uh, thumbnails and templates are very much similar. You know what I mean? They are profile images. Now, this is what I mean and when I talk about templating. I get asked about templates every once in a while, and I'm going to talk to you about the do's and don'ts of templates and things you can do to make templates better, especially for your blockouts. Yeah, blockouts. This could turn into many videos, but for now, we're just going to do a light touch on how to do a template if you've never done one for your first time and you want to get a good profile image. Now, what is a profile image? That is this. Camera straight on, in the middle, and let's just say I'm like this. Let's make it more level. Profile, arm out, everything. And then when you take your picture, it's a straight on view to the camera, level and balanced. Now, does that make sense? Hopefully it does, because that's what this is right now. That is a profile image of the eagle. Sorry if I've still lost my voice. I've lost it for like a couple weeks. Didn't have COVID, but you know what? It's crazy. I uh, just lost my voice. Now, when I'm doing templates, I'm looking at always the profile image. The profile image is going to be your most important part about doing a template. If you do a template where it's skewed, and you do movement and your shoulders forward and your back is back. That's where a lot of people go wrong in templates. In templates, it's like a standing bear. If, you're, if you have a straight on picture of a bear standing and he's like, Rah, you know, or the mouth is to the exact side and it's open and you can see it, then you've got a good profile template. But if you do not have that profile view, excuse me, then that's where you start to go wrong. And it's, and, and, and it's kind of like when you're creating dynamic movement. You do dynamic movement, you know, like say you have a ballerina and she's like this. Yes, you can get the profile of what the arm is if it's a great shot, but you still have to figure out how to get the angles right. This is a very easy way for beginners to block out and come up with a design that will do it. And you don't have to do this eagle. You can do anything. You can go on to look, look at vectors. You, I Google vectors all the time and vectors are great. Transparent images, but it's gotta be level. You know what I mean? You have to think, okay, side profile view. Here is the side of my face. I could probably carve this. And then after that is what you do to carve. Now. I don't think it's cheating or anything like that. I think it's a fast track way to make a carving go faster, especially with blockouts. Now, here's some tips. Now that we've talked about profile view, uh, everybody asks, we've talked about it. It's one of my most asked questions. What projector do you use? Blah, 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 blah. I literally get the cheapest one on Amazon. <laughs> I don't even know the brand doesn't matter just get one that works and that can sync to your phone and you can stream it or you can Bluetooth it I mean in this day and age it should be a no-brainer then you just take your phone or your iPad or your computer and pro ideally iPad something you can bring to the shop and do a profile image template it now you can do one of two things you can template it straight onto the log if it's dark enough in your shop or you have like a place where you can make it dark or if it's too light in the day Find a dark place, get some nice uh, butcher paper, and create your image. Now, moving on, what I'm gonna do is basically, I just cut it out. Like this is, this is gonna be an eagle head bench for a school. And what I'm gonna do is, I've, you've taken their logo essentially. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna grab some spray paint. And all I'm doing really, 
for doing this is this. And it's that simple. I'm not gonna do much more. I've got the eyes, I've got the beak. And then I can reuse this template because it's actually a double-sided bench. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, flip it, because it's the same profile, I'll be able to take this off and put it over here. Oh, instant quick tip to help you out with profiles. Obviously these are staples, right? Now, if you're in a competition or just in general, staples, if you put your stapler real tight, <laughs> it's a pain in the butt to get off. I use screw uh, thing, but what I do is I hold my stapler a little bit further back. So this is actually too close. I'm using my left hand, but I use it back so it doesn't go all the way in. So I can just grab it, rip it off. And you take a, you just do the spots where you're gonna really hit it. And I actually did it a little too far forward on these ones, but that's what you do. You just get her done. And there's our profile image as it falls down. Sorry about the camera. You probably can't see anything. There we go. There is a profile image of the eagle that I am doing. And that's totally gonna work for me. I'm gonna be able to block it out. Now, I'll keep this template over here. Now let's talk about blocking out from templates. The one thing always faults Chris Foltz uh, told me is that, and that's what I've always told everyone else now, because you know, 12 years ago is when I was learning and I always still talk about him as my mentor, but you know, now we're colleagues and the way we work is, the way I would say it and explain it to everyone else is, you are blocking true to form. So if this line is here and you wanna be safe, you wanna be safe and, and cut it above the line by half an inch. You've instantly gone wrong. You have gone completely wrong because now it's not true to profile. You need to cut it right on the line as quick as, or as close as you can, as best you can, and do it, just make it as close and tight as you can. Because the further you go away from the lines, the harder it is to get it back. And that will always be something you need to remember. That happens in ice, that happens in wood, that happens anytime you template because you're taking a profile view. Profile view means it is already there. Then you block it out. You block this part. Cut, 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 cut. We'll cut this out. This part doesn't matter. I'm gonna make this into texture. We're not talking about the carving. We're just talking about templating today. So once you have that, then the challenging part of carving comes into play. This helps you fast track, especially in competition. If you're prepared and you're ready and you wanna compete and you wanna really kind of step up your game and you have an idea and you know the log sizes that are you're going into when you go to a competition, this is the way to prepare in advance. And if you're really meticulous, you could go, I have a log that could be three, They maybe they give you a guarantee. So say it's a uh, two feet minimum diameter. So okay, you got sapwood, sapwood, let's just say 22 inches. So you do a 22 inch template because you gotta cut a slab. When you do a template, you have to cut a slab off to make it flat. You don't put it on a round. Then make it smaller and then say you think there could be up to four feet. Then do a 36 or a 34 and uh, if it's four feet or do a 36 and a 48 or something or, or no 44 and 34. Always give room for the slab. Always give room for the, uh, you know, because you want to have, like, this is already done, but you want a flat surface when you apply your profile because it's already a profile view. This is a 10 minute video. Whoa. This is becoming quite the template video. Um, but that will help you big time when you are doing this so when you have that then you cut it you cut it to block it out get it to where you need to go get all your staples out because once you hit them you know if you hit them with your saw it, you know it is what it is it's not going to make it dull if they're just aluminum staples but it will 
it will slow one or two teeth down if you care about that. So once you have that, then you move into shaping and form. Now, this is just strictly for block out. That's all templates are. You are blocking out. So stay true to your lines, get a good profile view image, and keep trying. And then, you know, when you cut, stay true. I always say it in all my videos, and that's true. I, now, that I've, now that I'm explaining why I always say that, this is why. Because a lot of the times, you stay true to your lines, you stay true to the piece, and then it allows you to shape and sculpt later. Because if you're going into a competition, I've seen it many, many times. Some guys it works, some girls, some people it works way better. If they sit there, they get their log, they sketch, they spend a good couple hours messing around trying to find their design. For me, I like to go in prepared. Sometimes I haven't though, let's be honest. I've sat there for hours and done the exact same thing. But when I'm really, really committed to a design and I have an idea and I already know that it's a profile view, you look at the Poseidon I carve. If you go on Ryan Cook Carving on uh, Facebook or Instagram, you'll see that Poseidon. That Poseidon was a template. Profile view, a ah, little bit of a tweak, but when you have those little bits of tweak, you just cut the angle of the piece to mirror the profile image that you're doing. And it does take some brain work to get it to work, but there are ways to make templates with movement. That's a whole other video. Right now, we're just doing beginner profile view templates. Once you accomplish more, then we'll do more videos on it. But that's <coughs> a lot of talking. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So this has been a Tool Talk Tuesday. And then, you know, once you're done, once you're done your block out, then begin shaping. And if you have a three, a two, like a directional change, the one thing, actually, here's a good another tip. If you have someone, a model, for instance, and you want to do a profile carving, so say you have this. Hi, here's my side profile. If you're lucky enough to have the same image that has this, then you have this. So you've got your side profile blocked out. Don't change anything. Do that first. Do this part first, then move to here, and then you can kind of draw it out because you're already going to see the angle for the nose, the lips, the chin, if they're predominantly cut, if you blocked it really sharp, like boom, 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 boom. You've got these, you already know where they are. Then you can go, if you have the front view of it, you can go, okay, well, now I got to think. I've gone from side profile, side profile to, now I'm going to go to the front. So Ryan's face is like this, like an eagle. Eagle's going to be very sharp, very, very angular. Like it's going to be like very, very, the beak is very sh long. Um, I don't know how to say the word properly, but it's going to be very angled. It's like my face. You put it, put it here, right? This is, this is a very sharp angle. So I could cut, cut, block, and then I still have the nose, which is the furthest point out there this is the furthest point out so then I can just cut it cut it and taper it into a triangle and then begin to shape so that's kind of my thoughts on templating profiling and as far as it goes for programs I know you'll ask about them just look them up I mean in this day and age there's AI everything there's all kinds of different programs you can use uh, Adobe you can use so many there's so many different programs and that's one thing I've been, I worked hard to figure out myself. I invented my own way to improve the way that uh, Fultz showed me, showed me back in the day because when I first started carving, we used to use projectors with, uh, no, those like old school school projectors, like the, uh, the ones you would have in your classroom and if you're a young kid, you probably don't even know what those are. But basically, the light shined up, clear paper, wasn't even clear paper, clear plastic, and then we would trace over top of them, use those big projectors to project them onto the logs, and then use uh, butcher paper to do our templates. But nowadays, 
you can stream from your iPad to your uh, <laughs> to this and I've just dated myself quite quite uh, handsomely there but uh, but yeah now the times have changed I worked hard to figure that out if you take my classes in the fall I always tell my students in the fall about that um, I might do a member video for that but at the same time it's something that I've worked hard to figure out but in this day and age you can literally figure it out if you really wanted to there's so many different programs so just do that or just take a picture and then scale it to the size you need get your projector and bring the projector as close or as far away as you need make it work to fit the log don't rely on me it's all about figuring it out and that's what I did when I started carving was I figured it out I tried to figure it out and if you're still here and it's 15 minutes and 55 seconds later thank you so much for watching and uh, you know this will be a video coming out soon Uncle Kevin's about to arrive we're gonna blast these out I just wanted to kind of talk to you about templates and it's a perfect example right here there's a template block out for relief right it's not done but there it is it's a profile view image done you see the leg you see the feet you're just cutting out and then you're recessing that's a relief carving very much different from here but yeah that's it so thanks for uh sticking around hopefully you're here if you're not cool but if this helped definitely leave a like be sure to subscribe thank you so much for supporting my page it does mean so much to me because you know it's a lot of work doing youtube and uh I'm very happy to do it because there's so many new great carvers and I'm stoked on pushing this craft as far as we can do it. And if you have better ideas or if you have ideas and you want to throw them out my way, do it. If you're a hater, hate on. And uh, thanks, man. My name's Ryan Cook. You. We'll see you later. Templates. Beginners. 101. Dun, dun, dun.